at least 20 years. A big problem. It affected my family. I didn't even know it really affected them, but they were totally aware that I wasn't right. But I didn't think I wasn't right. I thought I was fine. I felt like they quote in the rooms, I was a functioning alcoholic. But when the law came into effect and I got caught, I had to do my time. I had to go to probation. I had to pay lots of money to get out of my damage. I lost my license. Haven't driven in 10 years. I went to two rehabs. Was fine when I came out. I was fine for six weeks after that. I was fine for even longer. I don't know how long. But then all of a sudden, something said, oh, it's okay, you can have one, once in a while. And I did for a really long time. And then obviously something happened in my life that I needed to have more than the one. So that created a lot of problems in my house. Interacting with my husband, I would be in total denial. If he said, you drank today, I would say, no, I didn't. And he would say, but I know you do, but he was involved in his life. Not that I'm saying he was wrong or I was wrong. I tried to cover up a lot of things, you know, within myself. And I did get away with a lot. But then when push came to shove, um, it was like, you really have to take care of this. I tried it all. I really, really did. But I would have um, spurts of soberness for even years. And then all of a sudden I would say, oh, I'm, I'm better now. So I can have one. And then the one led to two and three and I couldn't. I, I, I know at this particular point in my life, I can't drink at all. Stems back from my father. He, he drank every day. He's been drinking forever. His father, my grandfather, used to hide liquor bottles in his car. So it was my grandfather, my father, then found out that my uncle was on a constant drinking binge. You know, I just flowed with it. I mean, did I think anything of it then? No. And then I had a mother who wasn't addicted to alcohol. She was addicted to cigarettes. And she always had insomnia and she stayed up all night eating. So her addiction was one thing, his addiction was another. I saw it all, you know, but did it make me who I am? I'm not really sure. You know, it just happened. My husband and I have two grown up adults, children. They both had their own issues. So at times I kind of like blame myself because they inherited certain genes but now they seem to be totally in control of their life and if they do it socially, they do it socially. I used to put it in coffee cups in the house. You know, I would get my kids in the car and I would take them places and I knew it was dangerous, but I could handle it. And then the situation came where I had my, I believe I did have a DUI at that point and it was recommended that I go to rehab. Listen, I had to go. I mean, this is what the law said. This is what I had to do, and I did it. Then I came home and I went to outpatient, and I did all that, and I went to AA meetings. I don't want, I'm not putting AA down, but AA doesn't deal with your problem. In essence, a rehab does for the 28 days. But when you walk out that door, you're on your own. You have to go for counseling, you have to do this. I did it all, but obviously there was something more that I needed than that. And I couldn't really find it in the rooms. I mean, I read the books, I went through everything. It sounded good, it did, it was good while it lasted. But then I relapsed a couple years later. And then I got, a DWI. I don't remember exactly when, and that was not not a good thing. <laughs> you know, jail is not fun, even overnight. And I went, and then once again, you have to go back to rehab. At that point, 
and I made a lot of progress. I met some really good counselors, and then some of the counselors were in the rooms, and it was okay. And I did the outpatient, and I did all the other stuff, but I still found a way to drink occasionally. And that's what ended up happening. Then I just started thinking on my own I could handle all this. And um, always, always, always in total denial. No, I didn't do anything. First words out of my mouth. I didn't do that. Not me. I'm fine. Well, then why were you staggering around the house? And I didn't even realize at times I was staggering. I didn't even realize that I wasn't who I was. Because I guess I was still trying to find myself. We had marital problems. I mean, he didn't want to be with me because I make ASS of myself. And um, he he's the one that thinks that I'm very selfish. The bottle comes before him and my children. And I don't feel that way. But he thinks that the situations that I have caused, I'm selfish because I only think about myself. I don't think about them. After coming to John and realizing that the problems that I have led me to the drink, okay? It's the drink was a solution for me. I wasn't dealing with myself, with how I felt, with how other everybody else felt about me. I had put Gail on the back burner. I had to do everything all at once. I never knew how to relax until now, due to hypnosis. I never knew how to take a little project and make it comfortable. Confrontations with other people right now are just so much easier. So much easier because I'm thinking, they're not really attacking me. I was the one that thought they were attacking me. But I wanted everybody to like me. I wanted to be loved, liked by everybody. And I didn't care who. You know, I just needed a lot of people. Now I'm realizing it's not going to be that way anymore. Because uh, part of my process that I've learned, I am picking, like I told John, new people in my life that don't know my history. They're meeting me now for the first time as a new person, not the old person. Okay, after the session, I felt like there was a weight lifted off my shoulders. Um, we had discussed issues that I never told my husband about. And then when I told him about him, he said, why didn't you ever tell me? I go, well, I really didn't think they were important until having the session. John made me realize that those were the issues that you've buried for so long. To the session, um, I left here totally relieved. I left also totally exhausted. I mean, we went through, God knows, 40 years of my life. <laughs> I can be in control. I can decide how I want to deal with it. And the most important thing about the session is John told me that it's an emotion, it's a feeling. And why I drank is because I wanted to suppress those feelings. I didn't really want to deal with them. I left here, I was smiling, I mean, I was happy-go-lucky for like 30 days. I was like this new person and John spoke to my husband, he says, I don't know who she is. She's totally different. She's relaxed, she's calm, she's, I don't know who she is. Okay, it, it came on real quick, real fast, maybe because I wanted it so bad to work. And it was, it was great. But I just wasn't that person that came home that Tuesday night. Relaxing has never been easy for me. That's what this has taught me. How to take time to sit and breathe. I didn't know how to do that before this. I didn't. So that's all positive in my book.